So let's talk about what God's doing in the gap, the gaps of life. Boy, isn't that the question right now with so much uncertainty uh, in terms of navigating the current season we're in. So I'm thinking about Psalm 23, and I want to read a couple of quick verses out of that passage, verses 3 through 5, drop something on you and uh, give you some meat to meditate on, because I believe that when we go through places of uncertainty where we lack clarity, it's a lack of clarity that emboldens and amplifies the voice of our fears. So watch this, Psalm 23, 3. It says, He renews my life. He leads me along right paths for His namesake. God's looking to protect you. We've been talking in the last season about how the covenant of God keeps us God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I, I got good plans for you. I, I'm bringing you into a healthy place, into a wealthy space. I've got good plans, and the uncertainty changes nothing. Man, we got to get to a place where we can grasp that. And so we can grasp it by faith, but you know this well, that you can have faith, and while you're moving in faith, your fears are still talking. So watch what David says. He says, he renews my life. He leads me along right paths. God is guiding you directly. He's setting you up for success, not failure, for well-being, not harm, for flourishing, not diminishing. I want to drop that on you today. God is setting you up to flourish and not diminish. So he goes on to say in the next verse, so he says in verse three, he renews my life. He repairs me. He refreshes me. He restores things. God's a recovery specialist. God specializes in restoration. And so he said, so, so so much so that even when I go through a valley of shadows, verse 4, I won't be afraid of danger because I know he's with me. His rod and staff comfort me, and he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Again, take that phrase, flourishing, not diminishing, because that's the word that I have for you today. So maybe you are in a valley of shadows. That's that place where you're really breaking through into something brand new, but because of the darkness, and that word shadows means darkness or deep darkness, we can unpack it to mean a lot of things. It can mean you're in a dark place in your life, a dark season. It can be a a short moment, you know, when fear suddenly hits your mind, it can release darkness against you, dark mood, dark emotion, dark thoughts. Uh, So it can be instantaneous or it can be seasonal. It can be situational. It can be spiritual. A whole lot of things there. We, We all have moments of darkness or seasons of darkness, but the important thing to understand is you're passing through it. But when that happens, what happens is darkness magnifies your fears and amplifies the voice of fear that you are working through. And so the key to remember about uncertainty is that it's not it's not a sentence. It's a place you're passing through. And I really uh, sense to encourage your heart with that today to understand that you are passing through uncertainty. You're not going to be uh, owned by uncertainty. The uncertain things you're facing right now are not going to dictate your outcome. David actually addresses this. He says, God's uh, leading me in places that are good for me. God's leading me to good places. God's setting me up to flourish, not to be diminished. But what uncertainty does is it makes us fear that we are going to be diminished. It awakens any unconscious fears of loss that are really deeply rooted at levels in our being that we're not paying attention to, but they're there. And so when uncertainty comes, it shakes us. And the... the voice of fear becomes amplified, meaning it gets louder, it gets stronger. You know, but here's the thing, just because an enemy's loud doesn't mean he's true. Volume does not equal truth. The volume level of your fear does not equal or reflect the legitimacy of the fear itself. And so when we're in times of uncertainty, our fears get amplified. So David, watch what he says. He said, when I'm in 
the dark place. I'm having a dark thought, a dark moment, a dark emotion. When I'm in a dark season and it's dark because of the uncertainty I'm passing through, I will not fear danger. In other words, I won't give into what I'm afraid of. I will not surrender to my fears. So a couple of takeaways as I think about this. One is when we're in a time of uncertainty, and, and by the way, remember that the Jewish day, the context of the scriptures, is new days always begin in darkness. As the sun goes down, a new day shows up. So the less you can see, the more legitimate a new beginning is. So your fears won't tell you you're emerging into something better. You're not going down into something dark. You're actually emerging into new daylight, new beginnings, new opportunities, a new sense of hopefulness because he renews your life. He refreshes your being. He repairs the places that get broken and shaken by the uncertainty we pass through. So what we have to do by faith is actually flip our perspective of our fears. David says, I'm not going to be fearful because I trust my shepherd. I'm believing my shepherd, not my shadows. Believe the shepherd, not the shadows. You can't trust. See, belief belief is, is faith. Faith is belief. You, you believe a thing. But trust is a different level. It means you've, you've learned a thing. I've learned I can trust the shepherd. So David's saying here, I've learned by experience to trust my shepherd, not my shadows. I trust the shepherd's voice, not the voices I hear in the shadows, the voice of fear, the voice of uncertainty. So he said, because I've learned to trust my shepherd, not my shadows, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to fear what I hear the uncertainty trying to project upon me. Because what I've learned is when I go through a valley of shadows, when I go through dark places, what I can't see in the darkness is that God's setting me up. So I'm not really going down into something. I'm, e I'm emerging up into something. And that something is a prepared place, a place of opportunity, a place of hope, a place of empowerment, a place of overflow. Again, I want to say this to you. We saw this in 2 Kings 7 where we were the last two Sundays that the four lepers were in, they're literally in that, in the gap of life. They're in that gap or that in-between place between the city of Samaria, where there's famine, and an enemy army. And they had to pass through the gap between where they were and where they needed to be, where God needed them to be. Sometimes God allows us to go through a valley of shadows to get us from where we are to where we need to be. And, and so when we're in the uncertainty of the shadowy place, we're in that gap. We can't see clearly the outcome, and we've got to press through and process our fears while we believe the shepherd, not the shadow. And lo and behold, guess what? We come into something that's greater than what we believed, and those lepers step in to a flourishing, not a diminishing. They, they stepped into life, not death. The uncertainty will amplify your fears, but your fears will never tell you the truth. So by faith today, I want to challenge you. Whatever you're fearing, believe the opposite. You're coming into a flourishing, not a diminishing, so you can trust the shepherd, not the shadows.